Okay, so this is Star. Hey guys, this is Star. And I'm dropping in with a little bit of Stardust, a little sprinkle, sprinkle. As you can see, yes, um, I'm on the floor today because I need to get grounded because I need to go to sleep. Today is March the 24th, 2021, and it's right around 4 p.m., and I have not slept since I woke up yesterday, which is, uh, I think, around that time. So, um, yeah, I already worked today. I made some money. So, I think uh, I might have to call in because I haven't had no sleep. And, uh, Unless I go to sleep for these four hours and get up and feel rejuvenated. I'm hoping that's what happens. So I decided to do a vlog real quick. And I'm testing. Testing. Testing my mic. Okay, so yeah. So I thought I'd drop in today. And instead of like just going in with where I've been, what I've been doing, and what I've been thinking, and what I've been watching, and what I've been seeing, and what I've been hearing. Huh. What we all been hearing. Um, before I get into that, I thought I'd ask you guys a question. How about you tell me what should I do about sleep? You know, like, when does an entrepreneur sleep? <laughs> tell me. I want to know. Okay. So, um, that's what I would like you guys to comment and the comments below. And as you comment in the comments below, Go ahead, like, and subscribe to my channel because I am Star and I will be coming through with a little bit of data, some, giving you some news that you cannot afford to not use, right? So my platform is all about helping us all see the light at the end of the tunnel that we are beautifully and wonderfully made and marvelous. Are the works of God and our soul knows that right good and well right because we come from God we come from God everything that was made was made by God and was made for God right and so we have to get into that you know what God made us for him for right and to find that out we have to tap in we have to go in we have to dig deep we have to learn how to think critically. So that's what STAR is all about. We are stars, and we are the stars that Abraham could see, right? And because he could see us from afar, we're made of dust, right? And at the end of every person, place, and thing here on this earth, some point it all returns from whence it came which is dust stardust that is so yes so star i recognize that i'm a star and that means that i shine all the time right and i don't want anything <laughs> to mess up my shine right so i'm always researching reading and inquiring and wanting to know what I did not know before, right? So it's all about growing, right? And to becoming the person that God created you to be. And you have to discover what your blueprint is, like from your beginning. Like, who are you? And what are you created to do? What is that one unique thing about you? And that is what I do. I ignite the fire within others. I shine without. I enlighten myself as well as others. And I engage the rest. Because we all have haters. We all have people that disagree with us. And we all have frenemies. Okay. So this blog is to help those that are either friends or frenemies. Go up higher, right? Come out from hiding and go up higher, right? 
that's what this is about. Elevation. Yes, elevation, baby. That's what we need in this season. We need elevation in 2021. We need elevation. Okay? So, that's my take on it. And stay tuned. I got way more news that you cannot afford to not hear. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I wanted to go over some current events and also talk about, you know, like where my mind roams, wonders, and, you know, what we do over here to, you know, just elevate. <laughs> at a time like this, at a time like this. Okay, let's see what's on the roster. Okay, the first thing up, uh, we have Carrie on Franklin, and I'm I'm drinking wine for this. This is a heavy one. Um, he's exposed to his father. I don't really think he did it intentionally, but what happened was he was trying to finally get some help, and in the midst of that, and he was trying to hide. In the midst of that, somebody decided to make him angry and record him, provoke him to anger and record him while he's angry. And they have created a catastrophe, basically, for Kirk Franklin. And the thing is, is that it's a sexual, child sexual abuse allegation. So, you know, those things don't go away, whether it's true or it's not true, you know. We're already just like, oh. I'm going to have to take another drink for this. I really don't keep up with celebrities, like, not at all. But this story, it was just, like, all over the news, like, so fast. All the bloggers that are common on YouTube that I see. Uh, they were all talking about it, and, and, and I saw comments also from uh, other news media outlets and celebrities like um, Steve Harvey, uh, saw Monique, and I saw Ricky Smiley and Larry, Larry Reed, and... Uh, Armand Williams. So I really did not name any two typical like news outlets like Fox News or NBC. Um, I saw a little bit of the interview with Tamron Hall and I saw the interview uh, with Carrie Young's mother, Sean, with her last name. Uh, mm -hmm. However, he was on Fishbowl Radio Network. So, it's like all over. It's really, it's, it's bad. And I have to look at it because uh, certainly not going away. You can't just like not talk about it. And you can't just the way that it was handled, it was just handled like weird. Both parents came out, um, three, well, all three, I say that, because the step parent came out to them, you know. Uh, and they were all like defending the father, but this was before we actually seen that the, there was an accusation of sexual abuse when carrying out the child. However, allegedly, there has been talk from Carrion telling other people that he was sexually abused. However, no one, like, has knew who sexually abused him. And according to this recording, with Kirk Franklin's music playing in the background, Carrion says, Oh, so you're going to play my molester's music. And he did not know he was being recorded. So, the thing 
thing is, is that this is sad. You know, what they both need to realize is that at the end of the day, they're both going to end up with an obituary. And both obituaries will have both of their names on it. So, you know, we just got to stay in prayer for them mm -hmm. because these are the last days. And then these days, it says that these things will happen. It's that the son will be against the father, the daughter against the mother. You know, the, pe the people of your enemies would be the people in your house. I mean, that's what the Bible says. It's pretty much predicted. The future of everything, you know? It's, it's, it's what is, what was, and what is to come. I, mean, I don't care what anybody says about the Bible, but you might as well read it because your life is in there. Your, your weather is in there. The explanations, if you have any questions about anything, it's in that Bible. Let me tell you, because that Bible is for the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not for everybody. No, that's why they have all the other religions for the other people that are not a part of the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. Those are the chosen people. God's chosen people. And God, throughout history, has always rescued those people. And he... It's still in the rescuing business today in 2021. Right on along with all of this family drama that's going on with anybody's family right now. Right? We're all guilty of this kind of uh, behavior, these scenarios, these family situations, these broken up families, these blended families, whatever you want to call them. We all have these weird stories. And what was most interesting throughout the whole situation, because I was just observing, I was not commenting, because this is a very sensitive subject, and people were, like, very defensive. They, so many people got on the defense. It was so weird, and they just were just hopping on Kirk Franklin's side. Like, oh, how dare him try to ruin his dad's career and his dad's life. And he's just jealous. He's spoiled. He's arrogant. He's, you know, it was a bunch of accusations. And I was like, and my coworker, she was like telling me, well, I think he needs to, just needs to grow up and he can't use this as a crutch. And, and I said, what make you think he's using it as a crutch? <laughs> okay. What, what are you saying here? Like, where's the crutch? Factor. Like, where do you get that? What words, did, actions, behaviors did you see or hear him carry on, do, that caused this situation to... Okay, so all I'm saying at the end of the day, what, what do you guys think should happen now? How should carry on and Kirk resolve this i mean it's it's time it's time out for us um not having unity within our own family you know it's just time out for all of the crazy news stories that we've heard in the last 12 months it's fish things going on with family like looking at all the domestic violence People that have gotten arrested in the last 12 months, that domestic violence and child abuse has just went to a whole nother level than where it's ever been so fast. With children out of school and parents laid off work and they're at home with their children all day doing longer periods of time than what they have ever been used to in their life. They never expected to have to raise their children all by themselves. You know? People need these schools to help them raise their children. You know? School gives a lot of parents breaks that they they normally wouldn't have. They don't, when they send them to school, they don't have to feed them. You know? All meals. So, you know, 
know, how should this situation get resolved? That's what we want to get down to the bottom line of it all. At the end of the day, like, what are we going to do? I mean, these are two grown men, basically, that uh, there's been a difficult um, difficulty in communication uh, that we could uh, assert uh, or we could infer, how about that, that they have a breakdown in communication and it needs to be built up. So what could they do? That's what we want to know. That's what we want to focus on. Because then that will bring growth, enlightenment, and elevation. That's what, we, that's what we about on this channel. Okay? We just brought it up because we don't do gossip. We don't. Uh, but that was a good thing that happened publicly, even though it's humiliating for the parties involved. But it's actually got people talking about... What goes on in the dark at home? So all these parents that are apparently abusive and have been abused themselves by their own parents have been passing this knowledge and faulty wisdom down on how to have uh what is he what do they call those kind of relationships? Uh toxic? Okay. Uh, talk about toxic parents just came out the woods with talk about how toxic they are towards their own children. So many were like, oh, I'll slap them. I got slapped. I got beat. I, they just started saying all kinds of stuff. And they were trying to use whatever happened to them to justify why this situation would carry on. He shouldn't have done it, okay? And I was appalled. I was like, oh, my gosh. This is why there are so many divorces and so many broken homes and families is because people think like this about the people that they love are supposed to. Uh, but we're not perfect. We all live and learn, you know, we all learn. Like, I learned by, you know, spanking my ch my son, especially, that, hey, I don't, I didn't like being treated like that. And why am I treating my child like that? Just because I was treated like that doesn't mean I should treat him like that. And I had to have a come to Jesus meeting one day after I spanked him. And then I went to my room and I was huffing and puffing and I was tired. And I was like, okay, something is wrong with this. Like, if this is what my mama and my daddy went through after beating me, then that ain't right. There ain't nothing right about that. I'm, I'm having some difficulties breathing after I spanked you. Something wrong. So, that was the last spanking he got from me. Other than that time after that, that he had decided to write me a letter and tell me what he thought about me. And I slapped him awake. That was wrong. That was wrong. That was part of my toxic parenting experiences. Like, I had a, a few because I had toxic parents that were treating me way worse, you know? And so I did not know until I did it to my child. And I was like, oh, no, that's not the way to treat my child. I don't want him to feel that way about me, you know, because I love him. And so we are all products of our home environment that we grew up in but some of us you know they just we just choose to do the same thing to the next generation which is teaching toxic parenthood like we all need some toxic parenthood uh come out of toxic parenthood classes like really because our children are people that are going to grow up one day and live in the world amongst other people. And some people in the world, probably more people than not, you know, there are probably more people that grow up with both of their parents living in their household in the world than there are people that are growing up without both parents living in their household. That's not common. It's just common in the United States. And we've made it the status quo, it seems. 
that broken families and blended families are the norm when really and truly they're toxic nine times out of ten sometimes you get a good story about a blended family and it makes sense but most of the time we all know them toxic uh, experiences with step parents can be devastating to children okay people aren't right there are haters out there and haters marry people yeah and they get in there and they get to hate a lot of times they hate on the innocent children a lot of times if a child gets abused at home by somebody when they do finally get the courage to tell they're probably told to never tell that again nine times out of ten they're made to be quiet in some kind of form or fashion about that because nine times out of ten they're probably telling somebody that's been abused themselves at some point in time in their life and abuse people abuse other people and they say, tend to think that everybody should be abused okay so a lot of times when these children do go tell some, an adult something happened to them that adult has a breakdown in communication suddenly and they suddenly don't know what to do they're at a loss for words they revert back to their childhood abuse experience and how it was handled and then they just pass that same knowledge and wisdom and understanding about abuse down to their child and you know that brings us to the scripture that says train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he won't depart from it and that's so true that's just like saying Apples don't fall far from the tree, but they don't. So, people that, I, I, I worked in hair salons at some point in my life. And I also worked for a blood bank where we went, went out in bands in the community and, and coaches in the community and we did blood drives, right? Well, sometimes we would travel far, pretty far. We were at work sometimes 17 and 18 hours a day. So pretty much during that time, we would feel like we should, you know, talk. And oftentimes these women and men, but more women than men, were talking about what goes on at home. And things that are going that were going on and uh and so they come into the shop the barber shop the beauty shop the salon and they talk about their life and they talk about their children and their parents and their grandparents and their cousins and their uncles and their aunts they talk about where they are today they talk about what happened when they were young and all kinds of things you know and these things shape people's people's first experiences with sex or sexual intercourse sexual activities um that involve them their sight you know like even introducing a child to pornography um those types of things have a indelible imprint on their minds like a record would you know it's like it's creating something when a child is introduced to sex by whoever it is that introduces them to sex. And once that portal of sexual intercourse or sexual activity is opened, well, it's opened. And it's going to keep on getting open more and more and more and more and more. Right? So, sex, in my perspective, is like that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right? And you, 
you really shouldn't partake of that type of fruit unless you have a covenant relationship and it's put together by God and held together by God and that is holy matrimony okay that is the best it doesn't matter that people get married to the wrong people okay I don't care you get married to the wrong person it's because you made a, a decision outside God to do your own thing we've all been there done that okay we ain't nobody judging you but that's what happened deal with your truth okay we're using it as a crutch or an excuse to not do better to not elevate to not grow okay it's time to grow it's time to elevate it's time to in, be enlightened and enlarge your territory okay it's time to go forth and take back all that the devil done stole from you and so that brings us back to this scripture about and i believe it's in ephesians 6 it says train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he won't depart from it now Excuse me. Okay, so well, let's read that. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. It says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. So that means when they are in the Lord and they are right. In the Lord, in right standing with the Lord, obey them, people. That's what it said. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, not adults, grown people, men, women, children. Okay. So first of all, if you were a child and you were taught to obey your parents. Which is be quiet if they say be quiet. Shut up if they say shut up. Don't talk about that if they say don't talk about that. Forget that if they said forget that. You can't be mad. I will beat you. You better not cry. I'll beat you. You have to obey them people when you're a child. Okay? But when you become an adult, you put away childish things. Huh, that's what the word said. That's another word right there. Huh. So anyway, let's get back to Ephesians 6 and 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now, this is one of them things that I had a struggle in, child. At some point in my life, I just didn't know how to respect people that at some point had disrespected me. I had, to, I had, to, had this disrespectful thing going on, and at some point I had to stand up to to that and say no, no more of that. Oh, by the way, these are my supplies right here in the background. I'm waiting on Amazon to deliver my machine so I can get going with my T-shirts and my coffee mugs that I will have soon available for you guys. Okay, it's coming soon. Okay, we're in the, the process of doing all these things. But I had moved from where I was earlier because I just decided I wanted to move from where I was. Okay, and some people need to do that. You need to just get up and move from where you were to a different place. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay, what matters is. It's that you're comfortable and you have peace in that new place. And you know where you're going. You know what you're doing. And you know why all the things are in place that are in place in that new place. Okay? So, it doesn't matter what other people think about your background. Okay? Come on, somebody. Because at the end of the day, we all have skeletons in our closet. There's something that we did that we're not proud of, you know, at some point in time in our life. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God for his grace and his mercy that he saves us. He redeems us.